All right, so in this video, we're going to be doing some more of changing parametric equations into Cartesian equations. This is the part two video. If you missed the part one video, definitely go check that out. So we have our two parametric equations up here, x equals t squared and y equals the natural log of t. So the hardest part about, you know, this trying to get this into a Cartesian equation is the fact that we have this natural log of t here. Okay, so that's kind of messing this up. I don't really know how to relate that with t squared. Well, we can rewrite this, right? If we, you know, we know that natural log has a base of e. So if we move the t here, the y here, and make the e bigger, we end up with e to the y equals t. Okay, that's how I remember how to rewrite a natural log. Okay, so e to the y equals t. That's great. Well, if we square both sides, then we get that t squared equals e to the 2y. Well, why did I go and square that, right? Notice up here, right? X equals T squared. So that means that we now have our equation. X equals E to the 2Y. All right, and that's basically it, okay? As far as this graph goes, it looks like basically like this, all right? And we, of course, have to give it a direction and well, let's kind of just try to put in some things here. We know that y equals natural log of t. Okay, so if we have a t that's very, very close to zero, okay, like a very small t, that's going to be a, a kind of infinite discontinuity, all right? So you can kind of picture that as the limit as t approaches zero from the positive side of natural log of t. Okay, and that goes to negative infinity. Right, because it's just going to be if you if you plug in natural log of a fraction, okay, of something that's that's less than one, you end up getting a negative number, okay, and as you approach zero, you get a bigger and bigger negative number, and you're going to go off to negative infinity. So we know that that makes sense, right? So it's going to start from here, right? And as we increase t, let's say we have uh, t equals two, we get the natural log of two. That's going to be somewhere up here. All right, so we know that this graph is going this way. All right, and that does it for our first problem. All right, so we have our next set of parametric equations up on the board here. X equals the square root of t plus 1, and y equals the square root of t minus 1. Okay, so what's kind of the, what's the blockade here? What, what's kind of stopping us from putting these together? Well, that's the square root, right? The square root's kind of making this a little hard for us. So let's get rid of that square root. Let's square both sides. So we're going to end up getting that x squared equals t plus 1, and we end up getting that y squared equals t minus 1. So all we have to do now to get these two actually like equal to each other, right, so we can cancel out that parameter, well, why don't we just make these both t minus 1? We can do that by subtracting 2 on both sides for this x squared equation. So we end up getting that x squared minus 2 equals t minus 1. Okay, now since y squared also equals t minus 1, we can say that x squared minus 2 equals y squared. Of course, solving for y here, just take the square root of both sides. So y equals the square root of x squared minus 2. But why didn't I include a plus or minus for this, right? When you take the square root, you should include a plus or minus. Well, look at our original uh, per, uh, parametric equation with our y, right? y equals the square root of t minus 1. That can't ever be a negative value, okay? So this y cannot ever be a negative value either. So that means that we're just going to have this as our Cartesian equation. Now, all that's left to do is just draw this graph and give it direction, okay? So I'll do the hard part. I'll draw this graph. The square root of x squared minus 2 just going to look something like this. All right, and now we got to give it direction, okay? Now, what is going to be this point right here, right? Where, where is y going to equal 0? Well, we know that's going to be where we plug in 1 for t, okay? 
And we know that t has to be increasing from here, okay? You can even just plug in any number. But if you were to plug in any, any t's that are less than 1, well, then you end up getting a negative under this radical right here, which you can't have, right? So that's a problem, all right? So that means that we know that this graph is going in this direction, okay? So that is uh, part two of changing parametric equations into Cartesian equations, and that does it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar in the next video in the series. See you soon.